Hey there guys, Martin here and welcome to this new tutorial where I will break down how I made this scene. I made it for my master 3D environments in Blender course uh, for a chapter where I focus on using add-ons for making landscapes. And here's the thing, many of you wrote to me that I should break down these environments in the video. Uh, and also in the posts I mentioned that this is almost solely the work of add-ons that I started using recently. Some of you reacted that I should not take credit away from myself. Uh, well, to show you I'm not exaggerating, I made this video. One note, the add-ons I used for this artwork, namely the Scatter 4.0 and Botanic, are not free. So, there, you've been warned. Uh, you can of course check the links to where to get them in the description of this video. So, the base of this scene is just this. Uh, three pieces of geometry, a foreground, a mountain midground, and a photo sky background. The foreground uses just this PBR texture setup uh, using images from CC0 textures uh, that's been apparently newly renamed to Ambient CG. Nevertheless, you can get this texture from there for free, and I myself use just the base color, roughness, and normal for my terrain. Speaking of terrain, I created it using the good old ANT landscape. Uh, let me show you. You can create it here and then I use the large terrain preset. I didn't change a thing otherwise. That's how lazy I am. Though of course I went to the edit mode and made a simple UV unwrap. Next I had some displacement, normal and a diffuse map for this sort of terrain that I generated in World Creator. There is an older tutorial available here on my channel on how I use it. Well, in this case, I just used a subdivided plane. I added a subd modifier on it to be able to control the amount of detail I will displace. And then I added a displace modifier. I loaded the displacement texture from World Creator in here, I set it to linear mode to source the 32-bit data the image contains. And then I displaced it using this UV mapping method with a reasonable strength like this. The shader for the mountain was pretty simple as well. I just used the base color from World Creator, plugging in some RGB curves and a hue saturation node to play with the colors. And I plugged it into a specular as well, just to give the surface some variety. Of course, I used a normal map from World Creator uh, and plugged it in here. And finally, I had this beautiful photo my friend made on a trip to Croatia. So I put it on a plane, made it very large and placed it in the background of my scene. The only thing I changed in the shader was I plugged the base color to the emission to give the image a bit of light of its own, driven by the image itself. Though I brought the emissiveness down a little with this RGB curves, uh, it was too intense. I then eliminated specularity from the image and also raised the roughness. Uh, you don't really want any glints on this image. And then it was just the work of the add-ons. First I jumped into this polygonic menu, which is company behind several wonderful add-ons. One of them is this Botanic, an amazing vegetation and tree library. Those guys are by the way from my own country, the Czech Republic. So, hey, awesome plugin guys. Anyways, as you can see, there are much more categories than just trees and vegetation. And the add-on itself handles biomes, scattering and tree animation too. In case of this scene, I in fact added just this pine here and put it on the top of my hill. And then it was Scatter's turn. A scatter is a big one offering you really amazing options when it comes to an advanced scattering of vegetation. Of course, just as in case of Botanic, it doesn't provide just that. There are rocks, leaves, flowers and more. In my case though, I was interested in this tab here. You can see there are numerous presets that can fill your 3D surfaces with amazing biomes. And there are even more of them in the pro version that I was using. Uh, I just basically scroll through the list and then picked one, which I thought would work best. One click, and that's it. Okay, not exactly. There were some problems here with the amount of particles, but I will show you how to fix that at the end of the video. 
Here in this tab, you can see the layers of various assets the add-on distributed for you. You can turn them on and off, uh, just as you would in any particle setup in Blender. Here, of course, you can control the particles, changing the seed for each setup you select here, or any of the other options you probably know from particle settings. More importantly, down here, you can add some intelligent masks to use for distribution of your particles. To cut all these areas outside of the bounds of my camera, I just added a new mask, used this clipping option, and nothing happens yet, because I also needed to select all of my particle slots here and add influence over them. Once that was done, the particles only appeared where my camera can see them. It wasn't perfect, so I hit this expand here to grow the mask and use the value of 1 and then updated the system. By the way, I used Scatter version 4, but these days you can access Scatter version 5 in its beta access and there you can try out some new tools it provides and also it's now using geometry nodes, which makes the add-on even more powerful. Uh, here you can see me just selecting the flowers and making them a little smaller, uh, not to cover so much of the view. And also I made the rocks smaller. And if you're wondering what lighting I used, well, it was just Nishita Sky plugged into the world shader with these settings here. I then rendered everything with this resolution, 512 samples, uh, GPU rendering, adaptive sampling checked, and this NLM denoising active. I usually bring down the amount of total bounces to speed up the render, and also, since I am using GPU, I used 512 in the tiles. So, I hope you believe me now, how ridiculously easy these shots are with add-ons like this. To be honest, it's almost unfair. Uh, but yeah, I certainly don't want to spend the bigger part of my career on modeling vegetation and tree assets, especially when there are amazing tools to do this for me. Oh, and by the way, as mentioned, this was an environment that I made for my CG Boost environment course, which is almost in its complete form now, so the early access discount will end soon. Therefore, if you are considering buying it, now is probably the best time. And with that, I bid you farewell. And see you next time, my friends. Martin out.